It's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for the morning, um, Dalton Hermes. Dalton? Yeah. So, good morning. Um, I did start working in this business at age five and worked every summer through high school and college. And I can tell you, that, and we're, we, this year, quick math would tell you we're celebrating our 50th year in business this year, but um, I'm as passionate and excited about being in this business as I've ever been. And um, one, of the, one of the real benefits that I get having worked all over the city for 50 years is to drive around the community and see where we have been and the tracks that we've laid in the city in making the, the city more beautiful. Our mission statement is to make our world more beautiful. And so I get, um, I, 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 honestly, I can't drive anywhere in the city and not experience that. We'll also tell you that what we do in our business is just a subset of a, a, a bigger part of this industry of horticulture. So we are landscape contractors. We do landscape installation and landscape maintenance on both commercial and residential properties. And when I say that, there's probably images that come to your mind about what landscaping is or what a landscape contractor does. And sit with that for just a minute because there's some real tr traditional things that we think about when we think about landscaping. And there's some, non and there's some non-traditional ones. And I want to start uh, by sharing with you what I believe is the non-traditional activity that we do in landscaping, which is working with Mother Nature, who's the, the most uh, blessed partner, business partner that we could ever have. We're really fortunate to be able to go out and co-create in what I call the original green industry to design and build landscapes. And the purpose, for, you know, what, what I'm landing on right now, the purpose of designing and building landscapes is really to create experiences for people and, and to, to create visual sensation where they feel uplifted, to create spaces where people can interact in their gardens, to create um, spaces, and I'll share some of these with you later, where people can gather as family and friends in spaces and get, connect, and get connection. And then in that process, lives are changed. And there's a, there's a, 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 a lot of evidence, a lot of research that talks about the effect, for example, in green spaces and test scores in schools, green spaces and workplace satisfaction, green spaces and um, physical, mental, emotional health. There's a great book um, was written by Richard Liu it's called The Last Child in the Wilderness, I believe is the name of it, and he talks about all, the, uh, all these modern illnesses and diseases that young people have in terms of diabetes and over obesity, um, maybe some uh, aspects of ADD, where these, these people, are, we have generations of people growing up on, on technology and on computers and games and not getting connected with nature. So we believe, we believe through our landscapes that we really change lives and people can go out and experience. And the, the more traditional ones you think of perhaps are trees and flowers in landscaping. You might think of design in landscaping. You might think of construction in landscaping. And I will tell you, in addition to those, we also are a creative industry. We're an innovative industry, and I'm going to share some of these with you. We're a caring industry. We get to care for life. We get to care for plants. We get to care for um, customers, we get to care for one another, and we can be environmentally responsible. And I, and I um, said this before, and there's so many people that are on the sustainability movement, but we, in, this, in horticulture, is the original. In my opinion, it's the original green industry. These, um, these are some of the newer innovative activities, and then in keeping with the theme of today's um, seminar on innovations, trends, and challenges, but these are, the, these are some of the things that we're seeing in the landscape. Rain gardens, best management practices, BMPs, and native grasses, 
green roofs and, and walls, and we were, uh, we were just awarded a large job. It's actually, in, you know, for us, it's $1.4 million to build a green roof on um, University of Kansas Medical Center resi uh, residential tower, I believe, that they're building there. And there's another one that I think we're, we're close to getting a similar scope for a green roof downtown. So developers are spending a lot of money creating these kind of spaces. Edible gardens. This photograph happens to be at our office in Lenexa. My daughter, second daughter, who studied landscape architecture, designed an edible garden. But we have like 40 different edible uh, plants in this garden. And it's really fun to be able to go out through the season and pick and bring that and share that with the employees and feel a sense of engagement and connection. Healing gardens, we built those. And they're happening a lot in hospitals. There's understanding of, of the effect, again, of, of plants on human health. Um, there's, a, there's a discipline of horticulture. I don't think K-State still has it. They once had was uh, horticultural therapy. And, but it, but it's, it's still there? Uh, no, but I know some of the graduates from that program. From that program, right. And I'm sure there's other programs around the country that are, are still doing that. So to get a, a sense of how big this industry is, We're like close to the movie industry, right? How much bigger is that than the NFL? It's big, isn't it? And I, I, I didn't have time to do the math. Maybe somebody does. I was going to figure out what percent of the population Kansas City holds to the United States. But you know, maybe it's a percent or 2% or something. But what's 1 or 2% of 73 billion is a big, big number just in Kansas City. So I wanted to share, and this is probably going to come up for a lot of you today, and, in, and actually in, the, uh, in this book here, there's some, some additional there's a listing of some of the great careers that are available in, inside of horticulture. But as it relates to our business, if you're interested, if you're a creative person and you're an artist, there's opportunities to be a landscape designer, a landscape architect. If you're interested in business, there's management, accounting, planning, finance, profits technology, if you're a technology person, there, we have places for you. If, you're, if you love people, our industry needs you. If you love operations, we have places for you. And if, and if, you, if you're interested in the environment and preserving the environment and protecting the environment, our industry needs you. So what, I, what we believe is that, when I, and I, I've seen this, if you go back to the uh, 1984 George Orwell's book and what the 21st century was going to look like and it was going to be more technology and more automation and more computers and less humanity and what we're seeing happening and what I'm observing happening is the farther society pulls to that pulls in that direction the souls of people are screaming to connect to connect with connect with the earth and connect with other people and connect with green spaces and get outside. And I think it's, it's essential, I believe personally, it's essential for human health that we have an ability to unplug and connect with the environment for healing, um, spending time with people we love. So we believe, among other things, that we're making a difference. We're planting trees and we're mowing grass and we're pulling weeds, but we believe through all that, we are making a difference. Um, I think we're really fortunate to be in this industry. It's a fabulous industry, great careers, great opportunities to make a difference in the world through this horticulture and landscaping. So I will, um, in my remarks, I would just say, We'd love to visit with you if you have any questions at all on careers. Um, you reach out to me or send an email and we'll get back with you. Also, while supplies last on our table out there, we've got, or we've got herbs, three or four different herbs. Feel free to grab one and take one home. We have organic apples. You need an apple for lunch. And it's uh, nice to be with you all. I hope. Thank you.